All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. So thank you for coming today to Getting Started Teaching Web Development. We um, have it planned to be here for an hour and a half. We might actually be a little bit shorter depending on, on um, how much feedback and how much interaction we have today. So what we're going to do is Robin already dropped the links to the slides. You are more than welcome to follow along or you can just watch us today um, as we go. So my name is Leanne Grant. I'm a PD specialist here at Code HS. I taught uh, middle school and high school computer science for 10 years before code coming to Code HS. Um, I have taught everything from very, very basic web design and, and creative coding and, and things at the middle school level all the way up to APCSA at the high school level. Um, so some very basic to some very um, advanced things. So I taught web design in high school as well, and I brought in certain modules from the web dev into my web design course. And so I have taught portions of this. I did stay away from um, some of the, the JavaScript in the, in the because those were my students that didn't have JavaScript. So I am going to talk about the differences today between web design and web dev and what actually the courses cover as well. We also have Robin here with me today, and she's going to be answering any questions. Sometimes I, we have kind of a smaller group, so some. But if you put put questions into the chat, sometimes they can get lost. So what we would really like for you to do is, if you can, is to use the Q and A if you have questions. But then any comments or interactions, we'd love for you guys to talk and talk amongst yourself and back and forth with us in the chat. All right. So our agenda for today, we're going to do a course overview of our web dev course or web development course. We're going to really deep dive into some of the modules that we have. I'm going to have you guys do some lesson exploration. So we're going to actually look through um, one of the particular lessons and then we're going to do a wrap up and a QA and a at the end. Again, if you guys have any questions, we'd love for you to put them in the Q&A. All right, is there anybody here that is not a Code HS current user? If you are, and you don't have to answer that, if you aren't, then we would love for you to sign up. You do get a free Code HS account, uh, which gives you access to all of our curriculum that we have on the Code HS site. And so you can click on the link that Robin put into the chat, or you can just go to codehs.com forward slash sign up. What we do ask also is that you sign up with a teacher email. So we do manual verification of everybody that does sign up and then you will um, have access as a teacher. We just make sure that students aren't joining as teachers. So we do um, verification. All right. Once you are logged in, to our course, I would love for you to um, click on this link. What this is going to do is give you that certificate of completion. You have to be logged into your Code HS account to do this. So whether you're just signing up or whether you are um, already a user, log into Code HS, click on that link, and I'm going to show you what it looks like when you do this. When, once you click on this, you only have to click on it once and then you don't have to do anything else. So when I click on this here, what it's going to do is it's going to tell you, thank you for attending this event. And then you will receive an email with a link to a certificate of, of completion after the webinar is complete. So we'll let you guys have a couple minutes to make sure that you are logged in first to be able to do that. All right, and then the other link that we want you to click on, the next link is the section that we're going to be going through today. What I've done is I've created a section of our web development course and Robin put that into the link as, or into the chat as well. This is going to enroll you in this web development course as a student. You are more than welcome with the, with the um, course to create your your own as a teacher. 
and to create your own section. But what we're going to be doing is going through some of it today, and I want you to be able to see what the students see. And so that's why I, I made that section for you. All right, while you are clicking on the million links that we've given you so far, let me talk to you about CodeHS first of all. Um, if you are new and you're not familiar with us, uh, who are we? So CodeHS is a platform for computer science teachers that has a lot of curriculum for elementary, middle school, and high school students. So we are K-12. We are fully web-based curriculum meaning that we don't have to do any plugins or any external downloads for most of our courses. We have, do have a couple now that do require a little bit extra, some of our physical computing, some of our game design. Um, but what you can do with, with our curriculum is that students can be on the platform. We have a lot of teachers tools. We have resources for teachers. Um, we have online and offline professional development. And for the students, we have instant feedback and submission systems like auto graders that you can use. We have a lot of extensive grading and tracking tools for teachers. And like I mentioned, it is all web based. No additional downloads or plugins are required except for a couple of our courses. All right, so let's dive in to web development. So we have a course called web development and it is a, a one hour or a one, a one hour, a one year course, approximately about 145 hours. And we do recommend it for a high school. So Robin is dropping the course overview and the course syllabus into the, um, into the chat. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click in here and I'm going to show you what our course overview actually looks like. So what this does is it brings you to the web development course in our course catalog directly from this link. So it's intended to teach students the fundamentals of web development in a project-based learning environment. They're taught the elements of basic elements of web development, such as web hosting, file organization, and incorporating JavaScript into HTML files. So how does this differ from web design? So I, I do recognize some names that were on our web design uh, webinar that we had yesterday that Jonathan led. So web design is really the HTML and the CSS of, of creating the web pages, of laying them out, of, of making them look good, putting the content in. So what does JavaScript then do? JavaScript is where we get into the interactive part of websites. So when you see something scrolling across a page, that's JavaScript. When you see a, um, you know, thumbnails, yes, you can make thumbnails bigger and smaller in web design. Yes, you can. But by integrating that JavaScript into HTML files, you're able to make the interactivity and the website look better. This is, um, embedding different kinds of videos. It is how we interact with our images. It's it's having a game-based um, platform that you can do different things and interact with. That is all done through JavaScript. And so the other things that we don't cover in web design that we cover in web development is web hosting. This is, we don't cover that in web design and file organization. And so those are really the big differences between the two. This can be said that you really need to take web design before web development. Also, it is recommended that students have taken the intro to JavaScript course before taking web development. Is it required? Absolutely not. But because of the JavaScript that is in our web development course, you definitely have to have that, that background. There are a couple ways that they can still learn JavaScript at the very beginning without taking the full course. And I'll, I'll show you guys that here in just a second. But this is our, our overview. Um, this shows you what we're gonna go through all the modules that are in the web development course. 
um, how many lessons, videos, exercises, challenges, and offline handouts. And then also it shows some demo programs. Well, since most of these open in a different window, I am not going to click through this, but you can definitely click through it if you want to. We have a sample lesson plan and a sample handout. And then it talks about certifications and then standards at the very bottom. So we are aligned to a couple, um, you know, an associate exam for CIW and then the Natural Computer Programming one. And you're also able to look at other ones as well. Okay, you can explore the course, you can use, you can watch our video tutorials here, anything that you would like to see, okay? So I'm gonna go back up and we're also going to look at the syllabus. So the reason that I show the syllabus here, let me zoom in here, is that it says 145 to 155 contact hours. Now, it really is going to depend how much time and possibly how much experience your students have in JavaScript or HTML before coming into this course. Okay, so it gives the overview and what the learning environment is. It has over a hundred hours of hands-on programming practice. Um, you can, it, it can really be focused to give one-on-one -on -one attention to students. The part that I really want to show you is this prerequisites. So this course is the third course in the web development pathway. It's ideally designed for students who have had the introductory to HTML and CSS and JavaScript. So students have completed the web design, intro to programming with JavaScript, or AP Computer Science Principal courses are eligible to complete this course. The web design is separate. So when I say or, it's either intro to JavaScript or AP CSP, okay? So because AP CSP in JavaScript um, does give you those, those basic JavaScript um, skills that you're gonna need in this course. So it does give us a, a breakdown in each of the for each of the modules then or what you may call units. So just for example, our first one, and we're going to go over it, uh, each module here in a little bit. But the unit one intro to JavaScript and HTML is about three weeks or about 15 hours. So if you think about three weeks or 15 hours, that is based on an hour long course. OK, so when I when I what I used to do when I'm using the syllabus on how to break things down and I was take that 15 hours, I only had 45 minute classes or 42, actually. So I would take that 15 hours, break it down by the 45 minutes and see how many how much time. And it ended up being about three and a half to four weeks of content that are time that I needed to cover unit one. OK, so that's how I did it. And I created my own um, kind of overview for my students to see. And so I would put it in a spreadsheet and say, OK, our unit one is approximately going to take this much time. It should be this week to this week. So they could kind of see when we're moving on. It's not something you have to share with my student, your students, but I always did, especially at this level when they're already taking a third class with you. They might be taking others other CS classes as well. It gives them a little bit of a, a breakdown. So you can see that then it talks about um, the different topics and the example lessons and the labs that are actually within each of those modules. So great way to use um, or a great idea to give an overview of the course. Um, the second one goes into jQuery and you can see each one approximately how much hours they are here. Okay, and then our final project at the very end. Now, there are some supplemental modules, and I'm going to talk about this here in a little bit, but the reason I want to show this right now is that if your students have not taken um, the web design or have not taken JavaScript and you're still offering this to students, we do have boot camps that the students can go through. Each lesson is about 45 minutes to an hour you could supplement this at the very beginning of the course to either refresh or to allow students to learn that HTML and, and JavaScript. And so, and I'm gonna show you where that information is located. This is all the information that they really need to know before getting into web dev. So all the HTML and all the JavaScript. So if you're thinking about this, 
here, you can see that this is quite a bit of content that they're going to have to know to be able to be comfortable in using in doing the web dev course. Okay. All right, and that wraps up our syllabus here. Let me go back to my slides. All right, so let's do a, a module breakdown. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over each module. There is an overview here and it, what I'm gonna do is just basically talk about what is in each module. And then we're gonna do some lesson exploration in the very first module. So our very first module is introduction to JavaScript and HTML. And the students are learning about the script tag and how it can be used to write JavaScript code in their HTML files. This is actually the lesson that I'm gonna bring you guys through to be able to explore here in a little bit. Um, I'm going to hop over into the actual course or into the section, there it is here, and I'm going to go to assignments. So this is the course that I created for you that you should have um, or could have joined. So this is the very first here, okay? And um, the overview, like I said, is that students are gonna be introduced to useful JavaScript methods that can be used to alter the state of CSS and HTML of a web page, as well as how the, the document object model um, supports the ability to change. So even though they have been introduced to JavaScript before, they're gonna learn some new tags, some new commands that they're going to be using in addition to what they already know, okay, in this module. And it really brings them through a lot of information. And I'm gonna go over that here in just a little bit too. So then our second one is our using JavaScript libraries. So students are introduced to jQuery in this module. So that jQuery is a JavaScript library that makes web pages more interactive. And when I was talking about interactive earlier, it actually jQuery makes the interaction easier. So it's actually, it's making the students, it's kind of like using, when, when students learn bootstrap in web design and how it makes things easier for them, that's what jQuery, the JavaScript library is doing as well. So students learn the basic syntax of jQuery and how to incorporate it into their web pages. And they're also gonna um, learn useful methods that help animate and change the responsiveness of what of their websites. The next module is a project. So right off the bat, third module, they are doing a project. They're actually building an interactive resume. So the students are going to create one single page interactive resume, and they're expected to add several animations using jQuery to provide or to prove their ability to modify HTML and CSS. So they're learning that basic information and now, okay, now let's apply it. This unit also examines the web design theories and can help students improve the aesthetics of their resume and to evaluate the quality of a website based on its layout. I really, really, really like this module. It is one of my favorites. The next module we get into is where we get into that, that data. So we're gonna learn about storing and collecting data. So they're exploring the role that data plays in creating websites, something that we really don't get into in web design. And they learn the various ways that data is taken from the web pages, as well as um, to secure themselves from un unwanted data collection from other people as well. So students also learn how to incorporate data collection into their websites and collect simple information from users, okay? Then we get into another project, and this one is called Collecting Data. So this is actually a multi-file web page that tracks the number of clicks that student, the items of content on the site receive. So it allows the web owner to make decisions about which content should be kept and what should be changed out the next time that they update their site. So if you think about somebody who has um, a, a, a site selling t-shirts, and they're actually going to be able to say this shirt has been clicked on 500 times and this t-shirt has only been clicked on four times. Do I keep this on the site or do I market it differently? So this is where that data is, is coming into play too. And students are going to test out one another's web pages and write written responses highlighting the content that they would change 
on the next iteration and why. Then we get into how to build and maintain a website. So you're probably thinking, okay, well, we've already done this, but no, we haven't completely in web design. And so students are exploring how to store their web files and where to store them, how to secure a domain name and how to maintain the website. So this is kind of like, we, we've built it and now what do we do next? Let's, let's actually launch it live. So the majority of the lessons will be explanatory in this one. They're not necessarily project-based, but they'll not be expected to host or maintain a web page off of CodeHS unless they want to, or unless you want them to do that. Um, but they will be given the tools needed so that they can do so if they desire. The last module is our final project. So this is where the students are tasked with creating a website of their own choosing. Um, you could always give them guidelines. You could have, or you could approve their topic if you want to. That's what I always did in web design. Um, the websites will have to follow specific criteria. So it has to have a certain number of pages and responsiveness and the use of APIs. And students go through a feedback process and learn about making their websites more accessible to a wide array of users. And in this one here, and I'm going to show you guys here in a little bit, there are five lessons. So you can see kind of an overview of what um, the students are going to go through. So this is the supplemental materials that I was talking to you about. So at the very bottom of any of our courses, I'm going to go here. If I was to do this, so I'm, at, I'm in my section here as a teacher. I can go to the very bottom as a teacher under search for content and I can have those supplemental materials. This is where you're going to view or see that HTML bootcamp or the JavaScript bootcamp. This is also where if I was to assign this, what it would do is it would automatically put it as, as the last module up here. So I'm gonna show you if I want to assign this to you so you can see it. to that's not what I want to do I'm just going to refresh here click off of it refresh and you can see that that JavaScript bootcamp is at the very bottom if I wanted to make it at the very top because this might be something that you're doing all I would do is go to edit scroll down here grab this module <laughs> I have to do it in a couple because my thing is not scrolling. Oh, I shut off. No, it didn't. My mouse is not, there it goes. My mouse was not grabbing it. And then all I do is it's doing it again. There it goes. I can bring it up to the very top. Okay. <laughs> so I have an Apple and I have an Apple mouse and sometimes my mouse does not like me. It's very, 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 very touchy. So, and then I would press done and now I have that JavaScript bootcamp at the very top and you guys are able to look through that as well. Um, the other options for supplemental material at the very bottom is the HTML bootcamp. Like I mentioned earlier, you can preview this as a teacher. Um, then we have our creating data visualizations. So what this is, is they're creating something like weather data and um, visualizing movie data. So they this is something that you can add into the course and say, hey, I really want to focus on this. And you're able to look through this as well. You can assign it and then you always can take it out if you don't like it. The other one is computer science careers. So maybe they want to get into, maybe you want to add a career module. And then the last one is the web development level one certification practice. So the very next thing I was going to talk to you about is the certification. So we have a web development level one certification. It's code HS based. And what you can do is assign this and it's going to give them more practice and get them ready for that certification test. So it goes over a quiz and then a practice and then a quiz and a practice for each of the four different areas that they're going to be quizzed over. Okay, and what I was going to show you, like I said, for the next one, it is an industry relevant certification and we have our own web development level one certification, um, which offers high school students the opportunity to validate their mastery of web development and it gives them the competitive advantage when entering college or the workforce 
as well. All right, I wanna stop here for a second. Does anybody have any questions about the course overview at this point or certifications or, or any of the content? Not seeing anything in the chat. Robin, are we seeing anything in the Q&A? We're good? All right, we're whizzing through this, guys. I love it. Okay, I will continue on then. If you guys have anything, just feel free to, to drop something in the chat or the Q&A. So what I mentioned before is that, um, we have our own web dev course, but there are some more um, courses that we have for web development and they are in our course catalog. And so I'm going to go to our course catalog and show you what I actually did here. The specific states, we have four states that we have, we have web development courses for that align to those state standards. And so what I'm gonna do up here in our course catalog is go to the search and I'm going to go in, I'm just gonna put in web dev because I don't have to type in the whole thing. This is our course that we were just previewing and looking at, okay? What I also can see is that Arizona Software and App Design 1 has web design and web, design and web development in it. We have a Georgia web development course, South Carolina Fundamentals of Web Page Design and Development, I cannot speak. We also have the South Carolina Fundamentals of Web Page Design and Development with the certification prep. So this adds in that supplemental module, okay? And then we have the Utah Exploring Computer Science, which has some web development in it, but we have Utah Web Development 1 and Utah Web Development 2. And what those are done, are they're breaking up the information into semester courses here and it's fully aligned with Utah standards. And then they also can take Utah Web Development 1 and 2, which is our full year here. Then we have our Web Development Level 1 certification practice. This is exactly what I just showed you here a little bit ago um, that had those four areas of um, to be able to, to practice for the certification test, okay? So those are all of our web development courses here. Now, having said that, we have a brand new course coming out, which I am going to show you at the very end. But tomorrow, we have a course launch for a new course called Web Design and Web Development. So what it is doing essentially is mimicking um, some of this, like the web page design and development. It's taking content from our web design and content from our web dev courses and combining them into one course. Some things have changed. Some have stayed the same, but if you want to learn more, then I'll show you the link and everything at the at the end here and the time. I think it's at two o'clock central time tomorrow that Alex will be presenting that and I will be on that webinar as well. Okay, so that's our course catalog and the courses that we have for web dev and everything that we have for web dev. What we're going to do now is we're going to go into our module deep dive. So now let's look at the specific um, lessons that and, and what they're going to learn within each of these modules for this course. I have everything in the slides, but I'm going to go to the platform to do this for you because I think it, it looks better. And it, it I like to be able to go through everything with you. So I'm going to go back up. I guess I could have scrolled, just scrolled and start with um, the introduction to JavaScript and HTML, okay? So in our introduction to JavaScript and HTML, we start off with this diagnostic quiz. This is very important because you are quizzing your students, basically a pretest, what do they know about HTML and CSS and what do they know about JavaScript? If a student has taken a JavaScript course and passed it and they can't pass this quiz, that's where you would direct them to those boot camps, okay? And that might be something that you have to integrate at the beginning of the course. You might wanna give these quizzes to the students before you decide if you're going to add in those boot camps. Um, and it might be something that you have them do on the outside of class, or it might be something that you have them do 
within the class and say, okay, you know what, we're going to do a quick review of some of the content and you can kind of see from the quizzes and the results from the quizzes and how the students are doing and what areas you might have to hit on in that boot camp to be able to move forward. So maybe there's really only a couple areas in HTML or CSS and a couple areas in JavaScript that you have to revisit before you start into the rest of the, the module, okay? So then we get into the lesson called the script tag. This is the one that we're going to go over here in a little bit. Essentially, what they're doing is they're learning what the script tag is, and they have to have the script tag to be able to enter the JavaScript, what it looks like, how to write to the console, and where does the um, script tag um, land, or where should you put it within a website. All right, so we're going we're gonna to come back to that one here in a little bit. And then we're learning about that document object model, object object model, and they're learning about the get element and welcome to the site. So they're really working on that DOM and and how to use multiple paragraph tags and everything. And then the longest paragraph is an exercise. It's actually kind of funny to do that. Then they're actually creating elements using that DOM. Okay. Um, they're making buttons and they're doing a roll call. So the making buttons one is actually kind of cool. So what this is a lesson here, it says, we're going to build a button. Okay. What would you like your button to say? I want it to say, help me. I'm stuck. All right. Okay. So I'm going to press okay. And now here's your new button, help me. And when I press on this, this is what they're creating and they're looking at this and how to do this. So they're using it here actually within the script tag to create that button, okay? And this is how you get that interact interactivity from, the, um, from users and how you're essentially going to maybe even create forms and all of this that, that could live in the web design realm. Could you create forms in web design? Yes. Are they better used in web development? Absolutely. Okay. Then we get into styling elements using JavaScript. So we're going to, you know, set some attributes in this one. How do we style things on a website even further using JavaScript? We get into different kinds of functions in HTML. So how to change text color with parameters. Um, the announcement function, um, a random number jump generator, a lot of things that they've done in JavaScript before. And then it's all about the this keyword and um, clicking multiple paragraphs, clicking a box, crossing something out uh, that they're going to use the this keyword. That's kind of hard to say, the this keyword. Then there's a challenge and the challenge is kind of is looking back, okay, what have you learned so far? Now let's let's apply it. And they're going to make a keyboard. So they're making the buttons, making the text and then putting it together to make a keyboard. Then they're gonna look at keyboard interactions. So we're looking at events at this point and we're looking at the coordinate plane and some alerts and how to light up certain squares on the keyboard. We get into JavaScript animations. So we are going back to that JavaScript and the animations and the graphics that we did in the JavaScript course and pulling them into HTML and making things um, more interactive as well. Then we're talking about positioning and we're really getting into that nav bar here, moving things around a hidden nav bar, adding the div animation. And then there's a quiz for the end of the unit, okay? Is there any questions about unit one, introduction to JavaScript? Nothing so far, okay. Our second unit, we get into the introduction to jQuery. Like I said, this is our library that we had been using or we will be using so it's really talking about what is it, and then we're how to how to use the selector and the different functions that we can do with jQuery and different kinds of documentation. So we can look at this, and then 
Um, we do look at the high school. We have some exercises. There's three exercises and then creating a smart jQuery table as a challenge at the very end. Our next one is iterating with jQuery. So we're printing a to-do list. We're using the smart table. Um, we're creating a smart table we're using each, um, the mark complete, how to fix the widths of something and um, another exercise called strobe light. Then we get into animations with jQuery. So we're talking about a bouncing ball and the Franken div. The Franken div is one of those, um, actually that one might be one that I can show. So the Franken div is this one here and I'm gonna open this. Oh, let's see if I can just run it. Okay, so what they're actually going to do is they're going to make this change. So I can say I want it to turn into a circle, square than a circle. And what's going to happen is it went from a square to a circle, okay? And now I'm going to do it again. And now this time I want it to do a square. I want it to change color. I can say blue. And then I want it to change size, what height. And then I want it to be 50. And then I press OK. Um, and the, I want it to be 50 and press OK. And then I want to turn it into a circle. So now what it did is it changed it to blue. And it must already be 50 because it didn't change the size. So, but you can do different combinations here. I could have it change from a circle to a square to a rectangle. All right. Can you guys see what I'm seeing right now in the Franken dev? Robin? Just just the green rectangle where it says square, circle, rectangle. Yes, okay. Um, so you can see this, but what it's doing is it's creating a pop-up and it's asking for user input. So when I was saying that, so a pop-up shows up because I didn't realize you guys couldn't see that. Um, the pop-up actually says, what color do you want to change it to? What height and what width? Okay, so right now, if I was to say press change size and I put 150, there's a pop up there that you can't see. And I'm going to do 150 and press OK. What it's doing is it's growing then from that original square. Okay, so this is what they're going to create in that actual um, in this animations with jQuery. And then they're going to do callback functions and synchronization. So they're using the animate execution and then they're gonna do an, a per element callback. Um, and then they're going to create a grow and shrink counter and then a progress bar and then do a challenge called the wave. Then we're gonna talk about using multiple files in JavaScript. So what is the ex execution order? and then talking about an, ex, um, an accessibility button. And then they're going to create, do two exercises, our first JavaScript file, the fix load order, you know, they're gonna do an exercise called fix the load order. And then there is a challenge called the wave with JavaScript. And then of course there is a quiz at the end. All of our end of unit quizzes are generally about 15 questions on all of our units. Any questions on unit two? So unit three, like I said, they're going to be creating that resume, that interactive resume. So they're gonna first go in and create the resume here. And then they're going to, so what is a resume? They're gonna do a draft and then they're gonna do a layout and, and a web design theory of it, exploring um, resume layouts. They're, it actually is a connection activity. So they're going and they're looking at different kinds of layouts that they could create. And then they're actually creating the interactive res resume development. So they're making it interactive after that. So that was kind of short for explanation, not short for what the students are doing. Our next module is storing and collecting data. So this is where they get into the, um, the, you know, the data por portion of it, like we were saying earlier, but how much is your data worth? They're really looking at, does your browser have web store, have local storage? What is local storage? What is cookies versus local storage? And then um, the cookies versus local storage response. So they're, they're doing a connection activity and then doing a free response at, um, thing here. 
And then they're storing data with local storage. So how to save your name, save button clicks, save a background color, and it's all with local storage. And then data structures with local storage. Okay, so they're using um, the, the JSON and they're doing the last three backgrounds and there's two exercises to the print to-do list and the tracking scores before they do a challenge. And you can see a lot of these have the same format. So in the JavaScript course, we would do a whole bunch of lessons and then have a whole bunch of challenges all together. And I really like how the web development does the video, the check for understanding, examples, some exercises, and then that more difficult challenge. Let's really see how, how well you can do in that one challenge versus grouping all the challenges together. And then we have JavaScript objects. So they're using objects in JavaScript the person object, using functions and objects, and then it talks about a contact and then adding a contact, retrieving contact. So they're looking at um, what to do with these, these objects in JavaScript. You're using input fields here. So now you're learning a little bit more about those forms and building forms even more, um, different kinds of input types. Um, this one I think is very cool too. Um, this is an example here and they can see that this is a text, this is a password, this is a date, a checkbox. And so if I was to create an input type that was supposed to be all numbers, if I was to try to put a letter in here or something, it's not going to work. I, I actually hit the number two, which is funny. It's not going to work. All I did was just press F. It's not going in there. It has to be a number. It has to recognize the number in there. And then they um, create to-do lists and then a birthday tracker here at the end. And we have a challenge lesson here um, where they're doing a survey challenge overview, a brainstorm, and then they're creating a survey form. So this is where they're putting together a lot of those things that they've done in the past here and they're creating it in this area, okay? And then they're going to have a challenge in completing the survey at the very end. And that might be that other students are actually completing the survey that another student created. Um, then we have the storing data with Firebase. Okay, so now we're getting introduced to Firebase and how to store data with Firebase and how to collect data. So you have to introduce yourself to Firebase, storing a book object and retrieving a book object. And then we go into traversing data with Firebase. So how do we add new nodes, um, visualizing visualizing Firebase um, free response, and then we get into retrieving authors and diary entries here. And we have another challenge on collecting user clicks like we were talking about before. We have the for and in loops that they're going to be creating. We have a whole section on APIs, a whole lesson on APIs and using APIs and how to generate an API key and creating a dictionary API. And then of course our quiz. Any questions about unit four? All right, don't have too much more left in the, in the thing. So I'm just gonna keep going. So we have our project next. I talked a little bit about this um, with collecting data and where they're going to define their project or their product, um, develop a hypothesis. They're gonna create a data collection website. They're gonna collect user data, analyze user data, and then make decisions based on that data. And it's all going to be done by using the skills that they were create, they were doing in the stecting, sec, bleh, storing and collecting data unit, okay? So that's that project. The last learning module is how to build and maintain a website. So unit six is um, how to choose a domain name. And so there's lots of different um, domain websites right? But it really walks them through how to choose a domain name um, and what goes into it and where, and I'll also talk about where to, um, where to host the website. So are we looking at a personal server versus a web server? 
um, how to host a website. And again, this unit is not as interactive. It is um, not, I mean, interactive. It's not project-based. It's a lot of free response questions. So it's more, more of I'm learning this and this is how I would use it. And they're analyzing the information. Um, how to host a website, hosting a website from your own home, self-hosted versus the web server provider, and then hosting on CodeHS as well. Because as you know, from the web design course, they do have their own web um, web design or uh, their own homepage. Then we talk about using a CMS. And so um, how to choose a CMS and then comparing CMS systems. We talk about what is web optimization. So they're really looking at um, how to create file, folder structures and file naming conve um, conventions, and then looking at folders and files and, and what does this all mean and why do we do it? And then we talk about optimizing our web information. So how search works, what is SEO or the search engine optimization? Um, what is actually ethical search optimization, and they're actually doing a Yoast analyzer activity here as well. So this one gets into more of the, um, the real life aspect of, okay, you learned all this stuff, and now what do I do with it after that? So this is, like I said, the more real life after, after at the end. And we, again, we have our project, final project, where they're going to do a project overview and brainstorm. They're gonna plan out their site. They're going to create the site and then they're going to have users test their, their site and evaluate it. And then they're going to present an innovation or make changes and update their, their versions of the website and based on the analyzations that they do in this part here. OK, so in this whole unit, um, I think it was, I, I think, 10 to 10 to 15 hours. Um, and so you could do this self-paced or you could bring them through each section as they're working on their final project as well. All right. Does anybody else have any questions about anything so far? If you haven't had any questions. All right, so let's go back and look at that first activity then. If you have joined the course, we're gonna go to the script tag um, exercise. It is in the introduction to JavaScript and HTML. I'm gonna click on this and it is the 1.2, the script tag. And so what we're gonna do is, is really look at this objective. So the objective of this specific lesson uh, that students will be able to incorporate JavaScript into their HTML pages and then use the console to debug scripts. And there are, um, there's a video, a check for understanding and um, an exercise and then, or a uh, example, and then a couple exercises and a challenge. We're not gonna go through the whole thing. I just want to show you what a very first lesson would look like from a student's point of view. So I'm gonna go into the script tag and actually I'm gonna go back up here and switch to student view so you have the exact same view as I do. So I'm gonna click on the introduction to JavaScript or the link that, that Robin put into the um, course. And I'm gonna click on this very first one, the script tag. So all of our units have videos that you can, you can play. You can just watch it directly on here. I would recommend as a new teacher, um, if you're new to teaching web dev, you do use the video unless you were to preview it and really get the content down. Um, what this has done is this is created by our, um, our curriculum team and our curriculum team creates the videos for you. And so it, it explains to students, this, these aren't for teachers, it explains to students how they're going to be learning this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the slides. So you have a slides option up here. I'm gonna to go to the slides and it's the exact slides that they use in the video only because I'm not gonna sit here and play a video for you, okay? And so these are the slides they use in the video and I will show you what this does. So what we're doing is now we're combining what we've learned in JavaScript and HTML and CSS together. 
we've learned some interactivity and some, some different things that we've done in JavaScript already. And we've made some really cool websites with HTML and CSS. But what we're gonna do now is we're going to have that combine to put that interactivity into websites. So we can incorporate JavaScript into our HTML web page using something called the script tag. So what the script tag is, is any JavaScript code that we want to add into our HTML file, we would put within a script tag and by default or by maybe best practice, we put our JavaScript at the very bottom of our body tag. And so all of our HTML would be up here. And then at the very bottom, right before that closing body, body tag, this is where we have our script tag. And all of our JavaScript will be written in here. And it could be a lot of JavaScript. It, this is only one example of one line. So the script tag, um, like I said, should be at the very bottom of the, of the body tag. And the code within the script tag can be written in JavaScript. And so what we can do is we can initialize variables and we can write things in within this. So this one is a name and we're putting saying, hi, my name is Alex. And this is actually going to print out into the console. We have some new JavaScript commands that we're going to, to use in this particular one. The first one is the console log. And what that does is that's when we're gonna to print to a console. So up until now we've used print line and what we're going to do in this is we're going to use console log instead. We're also going to learn alert and prompt as our new JavaScript tech commands. So in the console log, it allows programmers to output a message to the console. And what this is going to look like is the console is a debugging tool. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about the console, when you right click and you press inspect, that's what it's going to come up. So I'm going to do this to see if you guys can actually see what I'm doing. So if I'm going to right click and go to inspect, uh, can you guys tell me in the chat whether you can see this here? Yes. Okay, cool. So this is what we're talking about when we're talking about the console. Okay. And so when we're printing something to the console, this is where it's actually where we're printing it to. Okay. You can do right click and inspect, or if you have, um, you can use your, your keyboard shortcuts as well for Mac or for Windows. So when we're debugging JavaScript on CodeHS, on CodeHS, um, debugging JavaScript problems is really simple, okay? And so in HTML, debugging JavaScript pro problems is a little bit more complicated. And so even though there's a clear error here, does it, can anybody show me, tell me what the clear error is here in JavaScript? Anybody familiar with JavaScript and know what this is missing? It is missing quotations. And so um, we can see that there's an error here, right? But in order to view JavaScript errors in HTML, we need to use the console. And so when we open the console here, we're gonna show it shows you know, this is our Hello World website. We're going to inspect. And then we'll be able to see here, there's an un uh, uncaught syntax error, the identifier. And when we click on it, it actually shows what it actually is on the, on the page. So it'll show that on this index HTML, this is where the error is, okay? So their students are going to practice how to do this, okay? And the alert tag or the alert, I'm sorry, the alert command, it allows programmers to create a pop-up window with a message. And it looks like this alert, you've just opened a pop-up. So that's what they will see. You've just opened a pop-up and it looks like that. Then they're also going to learn the prompt command. So allows programmers to input values into a pop-up window. And this is what I was showing you a little bit ago that you couldn't see when I was changing the, the height and the width and the, those, but you'll be able to see it on yours. Okay, so for this one, we're going to initialize a variable named name. We're gonna call it a prompt and say, what is your name? So this is going to prompt asking you what your name is, 
with an alert that says welcome and then your name after you type it in, okay? So with this, this is what it's gonna look like. What is your name? So the user types in Carol and it says, welcome Carol. So that is how we're going to use the prompt and the alert. Now it's your turn. So now this is the concepts you can actually, what I would always do is keep something like this up on the screen as the students are, are going, knowing that this is what they're, what it's going to look like. And then we go into, um, the next activity. And so when I press next, it's going to take me to a quiz. And what the quiz is, is the quiz is over the video. Okay, it's not over anything else except for what was covered in the video. And so this particular one has three questions. Um, we'll just go ahead and do the first one. What is the console? Can anybody tell me, is it A, B, C, or D? So it's a type of web browser. It's a debugging tool that's built into a web browser. It's a tag that allows programmers to write JavaScript, or it's a command that prints a value into the browser. Can anybody tell me what the answer to that one is? It is B. Actually, it's B. It's a debugging tool. Okay, so this is going to tell me that it's correct here, and then we're not going to answer the other questions right now, but that's what you would do. And then you would go to, and students can't see all this extra stuff. This is only me because I'm an admin or teacher. So after that, we're going to continue and then we get into our first example. So it says, open the console to see a message. And I know you guys can't see this, but a pop-up came up. It says, open the console to see a message. And then I press okay. So um, I'm going to explore this actually can't do that. Okay. So it says alert prompt and console jog, um, console log can be all used to help debug. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to inspect, I'm going to bring this up, go to my console and look at this here. This is what I'm looking for. All right. I can see a lot of stuff, a lot of information here, but, um, I don't necessarily want to have all of that. What I want to do is just go to my console. Where do I, where was I before? Let's go open this up. I don't know what I, what I clicked on actually. Let's do it again. Um, I go to my console and I can see right here, it says, welcome to web development. We're glad to have you here. Okay. Do I see that anywhere here? No, because it's in the script. So anything we write in this script is not going to show up on our web page but it is going to show up here. And then there's an alert that says open the, open the console to see a message. And that's what came up when I opened it at the very beginning. And if you guys are clicking through this, you'll be able to see that. And then there's a prompt that says, do you remember what the console, what the console is? And you can type yes or no into that there too. So we used all three commands here and you can see this is where that first one, that console log where we're printing to the console is right there. Okay. And then I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and close this. So that's my first example. There's nothing new to do except for to explore. Then we get into our first exercise. So in this exercise, we're going to learn how to open the console and how to use it. So we have showed them how now they're just going to practice. Okay. So there are a couple ways to open the console. Like I said, you can do your, your type command, your command option J or your control shift J or you can go to your um, inspect on the left-hand side, but it actually gives you directions on what they want you to do in this exercise, okay? And I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but um, it will, if I was to go here on the assignment, this is where it's going to be here as well, okay? And then it says, before we start clicking, this will allow you to change what location did you choose, okay? There we go. And you're going to put your answers here of one, two, A, B, C, D, and three. Okay. So you're going to follow these directions and then put the information here as well in this exercise. I'm going to go on to the next one. This is where they do an alert introduction. So in this exercise, you'll prompt the user to enter their name into a pop-up window and then create an alert that greets them just like we saw in the video. 
um, or in the slides. So what is your name? And then course code. Yeah, it's the last five of the, um, the join code. No, that's okay, Justin. Um, so this is exactly like it was in the slides. Okay, so they're going to create this. Um, and then they're going to alert then at the end. So where do I put my script tag? I start here. I open up my script tag. I can type script. And this is where I'm doing it here. Okay. So this is where I'm going to start my alert and everything on that side here. There. Right. Our third exercise in this one is debugging the console. So now we have some errors and we're going to look in the console and see if we can find the errors to be able to fix them. If I was to look through this here, I might be able to find them right away, but we want to be able to see in the console. So I am going to inspect, I'm going to, oh, there's an uncaught, uncaught syntax error right here. If I was to open the console, actually, How do I do this? It looks different. Which one do I need to be on? Anybody know? Because I can't see my... Huh. I can't see it. But... um they'll be able to go through and they'll be able to fix it. For some reason, I can't see it on mine, but um, that's where we do there. And then the last one is a challenge, okay? So there is a pop-up that came up right away and it says what year was Code HS founded? So this is a quick trivia and you're gonna find the information in, um, and unless you cancel it, you can't <laughs> try to cancel everything out. All these pop-ups are popping up, but that they have to be able to um to go through and find these answers. All right, in here and so their their trivia questions are written there as well. So the assignment says um in this exercise you're going to create a, a trivia a quick trivia quiz. The quiz should have at least three questions and should tell the user if they got the answer correct immediately after they answer. So they are using JavaScript and they're probably using if else and they're probably using an alert and a prompt and all that stuff in there so they're they're putting everything together that they learned in that one all right any questions about our script tag lesson or how lessons are formatted Glad that I got to show you guys an actual walkthrough of a lesson. They all look very similar. It's just the content is very different as well. No questions? You guys are all so quiet today. Okay. So um, some of the things that I can show you um, in addition to the lesson is that when we look at a lesson, it, it's, it's what we've created for you. So always know that you can add things or you can modify things within a lesson. Um, you, can, you can change the order of something. The reason I showed this lesson, this isn't particularly from this, um, this one here, but the check for understanding is usually right after the video, okay? But what if I wanted my check for understanding to be a exit ticket? I can take my check for understanding in that lesson and I can move it down and I can show you guys how to do that very quickly too. Um, oh, I closed my section, didn't I? Where are you? <laughs> That might be it. No, that's not it. Um, 
I don't know why I can't find my section. There you are. Nope, that's not it either. Anyway, what you can do, there it is. Oh my goodness. So when I'm in my assignments here and I go into that script tag, okay? Maybe I want my check for understanding script tag quiz to be um, a uh, an exit ticket. So what I could do is go to this and I can move down. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cl keep clicking move down until it gets to the very bottom, okay? So now it is there, it's my exit ticket for this lesson and I can do it that way as well, okay? So there's a lot of different kinds of additions and modifications you can do. Another thing to, to think about is um, you can unassign certain exercises or challenges if you would like different ways to use the slides and the videos. You could always watch the slides or watch the videos together. You can watch them individually. Um, you can do a flipped classroom kind of thing where they watch a video and then you have a student teach about what they learned or in groups they, they say how, what they learned. You can pause the video to assess or you can add like add puzzles into there or you can do a direct instruction with the slides like I did today. Another thing that you can do is um, use the examples and the exercises in different ways. So you can use the, exa the example as an exemplar program. So saying, hey, this is what it really should look like. You can do whiteboarding activities. Um, so I would always ask my students during the ex um, examples, a lot of them have challenges in the lesson plans that you always can look at. And by going to that challenge, you're, you can have them do extra things in the examples. Um, and I would have them do them maybe on a whiteboard or something like that. You can use Sandbox um, to collaborate or, or any other act or at any other activities that you would like into these. They do, we do have a lesson plans with each of these. The lesson plan is a pro feature. If you don't have pro, um, a lot of the lessons um, or modules, well, you will get maybe the first couple in some of the modules. But the, um, for example, in our intro to HTML, um, this is the lesson plan. And what this is, is here is that shows what the class opener is, the introduction to HTML. Let's work together. What's our first HTML page? match my code. So you can see that this is from the web design. And then this is um, only available if this teacher has has pro. Okay, so you can see what it would look like. You have a little bit of information, but you don't have everything. Okay. And then, like I said, some best practices is what routines do you currently use in your classroom? You can implement them into our lesson plans as well and kind of change things up after a while. Oh, that's not supposed to be there. So then um, to wrap up, if, do we have any questions before we wrap up? You guys haven't asked, asked any questions yet. So I'm assuming that I'm going over the course really well and you guys are understanding the content. Either that or you guys are just really, really tired on a Tuesday during your summer. I bet somebody's probably sitting by the pool listening to this or by the lake or water. All right, so some other resources, just so you guys know overall, if you would like to become more involved in Code HS, um, you can become a Code HS certified educator. Um, we have options to be able to earn your own teacher micro credentials as well. We have a Code HS Facebook educators group, and then you always can follow us on social media at Code HS as well. Now, what I would love for you guys to do, you haven't talked to me hardly at all today. So what I would love for you to do is to take a couple minutes and give me some feedback, okay? Could you possibly give me some feedback about um, how I did in this, in this webinar, okay? Um, good and bad. I would like to know this. What I do is if there's something that you would like to know in the future um, for planning for other webinars, I'd love to be able to share that with you. 
Um, it, it helps in scheduling webinars in the future. If in this webinar, you think we should have gone something more in depth or less in depth, I would love to know that because we're always adjusting the webinars and we want them to be suited to you to the best that you, what you guys would like to learn as well. Okay. So I'd love for you to take some time and do that. If you did come in after, um, I showed the, uh, the attendance link, this is to be able to get a, certif a certificate of completion. You do have to be logged into CodeHS to be able to do this, um, but it will send you an email and you just click on it once and that's it. Then we have some upcoming webinars. Like I said, tomorrow, today we have a course launch for AI. So we have three new AI courses. And we're gonna do a course launch this afternoon from two to 2.30 Central Time. And then tomorrow is that web design and, and, and development course launch. So Alex is going to walk you through the course that he developed and answer any questions during that time. We have another course launch, our new, our updated fundamentals of cybersecurity. And then we get into our AP week, which is um, getting started teaching AP CSA or AP CSP. To round out the summer, our last week, we have teaching cybersecurity, which is that new course, um, getting started teaching middle school, computer science in middle school. We have a new updated um, game development in Unity, and that one on the 30th is a course launch as well. We have a collaborating with AI, and then teaching game development in Unity is our last webinar for the summer. We're going to take almost about a month break, and then we will be back for with back to school webinar starting in September, a couple days after Memorial, or after Memorial Day, after Labor Day, okay? So you can go to codehs.com forward slash free PD to get signed up for any of those. If you don't have pro at your school or if you'd like to bring CodeHS to your school or district in a larger aspect, you can always go to codehs.com forward slash learn more as well. All right. I'm going to tell you thank you. I am going to hang out where we are. I told you guys we're going to be early. Um, we are about 14 minutes early. I'll probably hang out for another four minutes since you guys haven't asked me any questions. I don't expect you to ask too many more. So um, thank you so much for coming to this, taking time out of your summer to come to our webinars. It means so much to us that you actually took the time and you want to spend your off time with us, especially if you are in Athens, Greece for the summer. So um, I will hang out for questions, but if you want to um, log off, you can. Have a great day.